To the men who discovered them, Carcharodontosaurus and Giganotosaurus were vicious hunters. I think that this animal was a predator. I think that um, uh, I think that based on on just the uh, the uh, uh, the shearing action of the teeth, I, I, I feel that this animal was made to grab something actively and cut off an entire limb and just swallow it uh, whole. I, I don't see it as a, as a passive scavenger. We are not working with a heavy and um, and slow scavenger, but. Uh, it was a real hunter. I think that Giganotosaurus was an active predator. Uh, I think that Giganotosaurus was unable to, bro to break bones and to eat from dead carcasses. But Jack Horner, one of the world's leading paleontologists, disagrees. Horner contends that the giant meat eaters, including T. rex, were more often scavengers. T. rex's arms First of all, they're, they're the same length as mine. T-Rex you know, is 40 feet long and weighed 12,000 pounds and has arms the same length as mine. But when you flesh them out, you find that this much of the arm actually is encased in muscle, and so only this much sticks out and, and really can't even put his hands together. And so he, so he can't really use them to grab a hold of anything. Whatever T-Rex was, it was a bone-crushing animal. And bone crushing is usually not something that 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 is attributed to a to a predator. A predator can just kill its prey, eat what it wants to, and leave. It's the scavengers that come in and crush the bones and take everything that is left. Other paleontologists see a middle ground. The giant carnivores were both predators and scavengers. Any top predator must do both, must be ready to do both and do it well. The spotted hyena is a famous scavenger today in Africa, but it actively hunts. Lions are famous hunters, but they routinely steal carcasses from hyenas. Any giant meat-eating dinosaur will kill. Any giant meat-eating dinosaur, if it were alive today, would also take dead bodies. The challengers to the throne never met T-Rex. But if they did, who would come out on top? So kids, are we ready? Are we ready for the year of the dinosaur? All right, here we go. Finally, the public had a chance to see Giganotosaurus go head to head with T-Rex for the first time. Everyone, we're gonna count down from five. Five, four, three, two, one, are we ready? Mary O'Donnell's full-scale cast of Giganotosaurus was erected inside the Academy of Natural Sciences in Philadelphia. And the public flocked to the museum to get the first look at the new giant. I like it. And to decide for themselves who's the king. T-Rex. I have to say T-Rex. He's scarier and stronger. Um, they both win. An enormous skeleton of T-Rex was looking on menacingly just a few feet away. It's really interesting that there's something, there's an animal, you know, that's so bigger than T-Rex, which is really big. Bill Curry traveled across the continent to see Giganotosaurus restored for the first time. He was eager to know its true size. So far it's uh, pretty close to Tyrannosaurus rex in uh, total body measure. The uh, neck vertebrae are a little bit longer, um, but the vertebrae through the main part of the abdomen seem to be about the same length. Three foot eight. After taking measurements, Curry compared them to his data of other T. rexes he's examined around the world. He concluded that Giganotosaurus is just over 40 feet in length, slightly longer than the largest T. rex. Overall then, it appears that Giganotosaurus definitely has a longer skull, and you would expect that because of the way the musculature is orientated at the back of the head. It's got a longer femur, 
but the tibia and the metatarsus are shorter and the overall length is about the same. In terms of weight, uh, when we look at the circumference of the femur, it's a good way to estimate the actual weight of the animal. And there's no doubt at all that in that measurement, Giganotosaurus seems to come in as a much heavier animal than T-Rex and may outweigh it by as much as 30%. And how does Giganotosaurus compare to Cacarodontosaurus? If we look at Giganotosaurus, uh, it's about the size of this one we have behind us. Uh, when we get more, we need to get more specimens to be able to say what the range of body size was. I think we can clearly say they overlapped. And uh, their maximum body size uh, may have been very similar. So in the final analysis, has T-Rex been dethroned as king of the dinosaurs? If you ask me, and people have, they do continuously, which of the five or six or seven giant meat eaters is the ultimate king? I'd still have to say, Professor Osborne was right in 1904 when he named this animal Tyrannosaurus rex the tyrant lizard king. Because when push comes to shove, this animal bites much harder, penetrates more deeply than any other dinosaur. So has Tyrannosaurus rex been dethroned? I don't think so. I think the Tyrannosaurus rex is still one of the largest, maybe not the largest, but certainly one of the largest. And in terms of its speed, in terms of its ability to process meat, and in terms of its intelligence. This dinosaur is still by far the most sophisticated. So as long as we keep looking at more primitive forms like Cacarodontosaurus and Giganotosaurus, I think that Tyrannosaurus rex still doesn't have to worry. We now know there were dinosaurs larger than T-Rex. Perhaps one day, even larger killers will emerge. It's likely, in fact, with a new kind of dinosaur discovered, on average, every six weeks. But until the next rival is discovered, there are already enough ancient giants, newfound and familiar, to keep us in awe of the terrifying animals which once ruled the Earth.